Okay, <clears throat> the greatest integer function, or it's also known as the floor function. I, I think one of the scary things about mathematics is all the symbols and and things that we use. That you know, math people who are educated in math seem to just fly through them and and take them for granted. So a few symbols like that would be the the symbols for floor function. Um, you don't see it very often, but once in a while you do. So you might see the floor function, the symbols look like this. Like let's say you had the number 1.1. 1 .1. Um, that, the floor function gives you the greatest integer less than or equal to that value. So the greatest integer less than 1.1 1 .1 or equal to it is 1. Okay, so that's the floor function. Now, some other symbols that mean the same thing is this one. It means the same thing. This is a floor function as well. And so let's say we had 5.2. Okay, the floor function of 5.2 would be the, so the greatest integer, this might be the something that you write down, the greatest integer integer if I could spell it today less than or equal to the value we're dealing with so let's say it's n so 5.2 is my n so the greatest integer less than that this is what it produces is 5 that's the greatest integer less than or equal to 5.2 so what about pi and it's also the third way it's done is int or floor like this. So let's say we did I and the floor function for pi. The floor function for pi, 3.14, well the le the greatest integer less than or equal to that would be 3. Um, the floor function for um, now here is where it gets a little trickier. Ne negative numbers, so let's say it's negative 1.2. When you think about that the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 1.2 would be negative 2 um, because it, that's what's less than negative 1.2. Um, the floor function uh, for maybe uh, just a number, just like say 4, well, less than or equal to, so it, it would also be 4. So that's generally what the floor function does when you when you use it. And and the symbols, so there's so I've just shown you four different ways that it can be represented. Um, either um, the kind of half brackets on the bottom representing floor function, this kind of double bracket, um, INT or floor. And I know the floor one is used in GeoGebra, and I'll show you that here in a moment. So let's say I had, whoops, let's say I had a function of that. So let's say I had um, the function L at x equals 1 third x, okay? And I want to graph it for all the values between and equal to 6 and negative 6. So all the, all my domain, I've defined my domain, domain from negative 6 to positive 6. So again, you can use GeoGebra, but I think, it, I think it would help you possibly to see this. So here's my x values, here's my y values. So negative 6, negative 5.5, and I'll just go by halves so you can kind of see what's happening. Uh, negative 5, negative 4.5, negative 4, and we'll stop there for right now. So negative 6, if you apply that function to, to it, um, I'm just going to use the lowercase brackets here, that would be 1 third times negative 6, which is negative 2, and the greatest integer less than or equal to that would be negative 2. And then you do uh, the same with uh, 1 third of negative 5.5, so times those two. So negative 5.5 divided by 3 
also gives you like one negative 1 1.8 something. So that would also be negative 2. And you just keep going. So negative 5 divided by 3. And I'll change it up a little bit so it fits better. Well, that's equal to about approximately negative 1 point. If you want to use decimals, you could keep it as a fraction. One, negative 1 and 2 thirds, or negative 1.67. But when the floor function kicks in, that would be negative 2. So I need to put my floor symbols in there. And so all those are negative 2. Clear and, you know, we could kind of go dot, 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 because it, hopefully that makes sense to you. 4.5 divided by 3 uh, is uh, negative 1.5, which would also be negative 2. Negative 4 divided by 3 is negative 1 and 1 third, which would be negative 2, because that's the number uh, less than or equal to. And you keep rolling, and I'm just going to continue my my table over here until you get to negative 3, because then it changes. Because negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. So less than or equal to means negative 1 would be just fine. And then negative 2.5 divided by 3, well negative 2.5 divided by 3 would also be um, a value that would turn out like 0.8 something or whatever, negative 0.8 something, so it would also be negative 1, so it wouldn't change until you got to 0, or sorry, yeah, negative, yeah, 0, because if you try negative 1, I'll, we'll throw that one in there, negative 1 divided by 3, let me put the right symbols in. That's negative 0.3, which the lesser integer would be, again, negative 1. So when you get to 0, though, that would give you 0 divided by 3, which is 0. And so we've, we've changed to 0. And you keep doing that all the way to 6. And so what you get is this nice stair-step function. And you can just plot those values. And it would probably be a good idea to uh, show you a graph of you know what happens so notice you know from from negative 4 to 3 negative 3 we have a change so what's happening there so let me give you um, a quick graph maybe there it comes so now, so when we graph that table, negative 6 is negative 2 exactly. So left 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down 2. So we'd have a closed circle here. And then all of the numbers clear to 3, you know, even uh, negative 2.99, or sorry, negative 3.01, would all be 2. And then you'd have an open circle um, at negative 2, and it would step to negative 1. And then at negative 3, we get exactly negative 1, and then that steps all the way to the y-intercept. And notice I'm putting a closed circle where it's exactly equal, then an open circle, because it steps at 0, it steps to the next one. And so then we'd go across to 3, and then again, that would be an open circle. Then it steps up to the next one. And then finally, an open circle uh, at 6, because the next one up would be right there. So, so that's kind of what it looks like. An open circle means we don't include it until we get to here. And so that's what it would look like if you did it by hand. GeoGebra is a little nicer. So GeoGebra, you just type in your function, like in our case we called it L at X equals, and then GeoGebra uses floor, and the value would, uh, was one third X. So I'm going to go X divided by 3 for one third X. And there we have it. So let me zoom out here. Kind of see, whoop, wrong way, zoom in, zoom out, oh. I did move, zoom out, there we go, and I'll move it around a little bit.
it so we can kind of see what that stair step looks like. And you can kind of see that same pattern. So um, let's uh, maybe drag this so we can see each number. Get rid of that. And now we've got a graph from negative 6 to positive 6. And so, you know, GeoGebra does a really, really nice job. The only thing that is tricky is right at these intersection points here, you know, that would be an open circle at 0 because it would snap to up here to the top. And so it doesn't show that very well. But it shows the rest of it really well. And so I'll, I guess the highest we need is 2 and negative 2. So there you go. So there's our step function between uh, negative 6 and 6. And I, uh, I hope this helps you. Um, these are kind of fun little graphs to work on. And you see them every once in a while. And I enjoy them. So best of luck. See you next time. And give me a comment if you have a question.